Hi there, welcome to jQuery for Designers. My name is Remy Sharp and in this episode I'm going to show you how to create a, a simple spy effect. So the spy effect came up in uh, on, on Dig a couple of years ago where you'd have a, a list of items and it would kind of fade up and, and just keep showing you new items on the page. So Real Mac um, is a, a, a Mac software company who have created Little Snapper and they have a website accompanying it called Quick Snapper and on this left hand side they have this, this spy effect which I'm going to show you how to recreate. So if I refresh the page you'll see the spy in action. <clears throat> so what's happening here is it's fading away at the bottom, sliding down and bringing in a new one. Now this isn't done with, with any, any Ajax and if I show you with um, with JavaScript disabled how am I going to disable JavaScript? Let's just refresh that Without JavaScript, it just it's a long list, which is perfect because then we can still see the content. So let's turn JavaScript back on. So what is happening behind the scenes here is we've got a long list of maybe twenty items, and we're doing the setup task of reducing that down to five and we're going to cache a copy of each one of these list items. So if we give a quick look at the uh, source Oops, sorry. you can see that the, the items are just uh, list elements. So we're going to cache each one of those and for the effect what we need to do is insert a new item at the top with an opacity of 0 and a height of 0 we're going to grab the last one in the list and set the opacity to zero and then what this spy is doing is increasing the height uh, of the top one and decreasing the, the height of the bottom one at the same time and then once it's complete it brings in the opacity of the, um, the top item. So let me show you the, uh, the markup that I've got already. So I've taken pretty much uh, exactly what they had pretty much exactly what they had exactly what they had and taken the the markup and the images that I need to be able to recreate the effect so we've got this list here which is maybe 13 or 14 items long and one of the uh, the, the the nice things about this particular bit of markup is that all of these LIs are 90 pixels high I believe yes yeah. so because of 90 pixels high we know um, we're working with a kind of a set height, which I'm going to do a bit of performance tuning at the end, um, and it's because it's a set height that it works. But I'll come on to that later on. Right, so um, the markup is is as you would expect. There's a UL. I've got a class so I can target it, target it with my JavaScript. Um, my allies and the the markup that makes the this particular little snapper thing. Um, the styles again, nothing special. I've taken it straight from Quick Snapper, um, and I've borrowed some of their images just for this example. Um, you can see the example. I'll, I'll post up the actual link to the original HTML anyway. So. Let's put in jQuery and when the document is ready, we're going to apply our spy. So ul.spy. We can do it as a plugin so we can reuse it in uh, other parts of our website later on. So the way that uh, we'll do a plugin is we wrap it in this anonymous function right 
Right, just to quickly explain this, this block is an in sorry, this block here is our self-executing anonymous function. This jQuery is being passed in to our anonymous functions and we're capturing it here. So that it's the equivalent of and then me calling test with jQuery. Okay, so I can wrap this in brackets. I, I'm not I don't think I actually need the brackets, but I could I could wrap it in here. And this function will get called straight away. And jQuery here will get passed in to this value. And I can have anonymous functions just like this. So this is our, our plugin pattern. <coughs> this is how we create a new plugin. So um, jQuery.fn.plugin name equals function. And I'm going to give it just two options for the time being, limit and interval, and that's the speed at which it runs. So limit is going to be equal to limit or four. So this, that syntax is the same as saying if there's a type of limit is equal to undefined, then limit is equal to four. In fact, it's equal to that. And I'm going to say the interval is equal to interval or four seconds. I've given this a, a few tests. Four seconds is about the time you want to you want to do the effect uh, for because the time it takes to to animate the different blocks. If you if you have this number any lower, maybe maybe lower than two seconds, uh, the effects start sitting on top of each other and they they start to kind of. Um, uh, overlap and it, it causes a bit of a mess. So with our plugin, we do return this dot each. That's pretty much a standard thing you'll see in all of all of uh, the the plugins that you write. And this is where all the magic happens. So what do we need to do? Step one. Set up. Step two, effect. Now, within a setup, we need to capture a cache of all the list items, and then we need to basically chomp this down to to four items. So, um, chomp the list down to limit, as in the limit variable, limit um, li elements. Okay, so let's do this first. So I'm going to capture a copy of the, the list itself. And I'm just going to comma separate my variables here. So items is the, the cache. Current item is a pointer to um, which one of these in the list that we're going to show next at the top. So that's going to be equal to limit plus one. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to trim the list down to this limit, so four by default, and then we're going to show the next one at the top. So it will take these four to be shown by default, and it will bring this one in at the top. So that's what limit plus one will do. I need to keep track of the total number of items, and at the moment it's going to be items dot length. But because we haven't initialized this, it's the same as zero. So we need to remember to initialize later. And then finally, I'm just going to keep a cache of the, the height. Or am I? No, I'm going to leave that for a second. I'll come back to that later. 
Right, so those are the variables I need to capture. Um, and then all I'm going to do is $.spy.find. I'm going to use CSS2 to target just the sub, uh, the direct descendants of the uh, of the list. And we're going to do filter greater than, let's say, four, was it four? Yep. To remove. Let's scroll down and make sure. So we've got one, two, three, four. And we haven't got jQuery on the page. Yes. Right, let's just save this, get jQuery on the page, and let's have a look. Right. So one, two, three, four. I'm hoping to take it, take out all the ones after this point. And wrong one. Grace them three. I think it's because it counts from naught, so there you go. Cool. Right, that's what I need. So dollar list dot find li and we're going to filter greater than open brackets and then we're going to do limit minus one dot remove okay and because we're calling our simple spy up here when the document is ready it should do this piece of work for me so let's have a look cool so that has worked uh, the problem is I need to actually cache my uh, my items first capture the cache <coughs> So what I need what I need to do here is just list dot find li dot each. So I'm going to loop around the li elements that are direct a, a direct descendant of this ul, and I'm just going to grab the HTML. Um, I tried this I tried the same process using cloning, so using just straight kind of node cloning, and I seem to have a bit of a problem after we we finished using them in the first loop so uh, the quick snapper example actually uses the the HTML from the the li element so I'm gonna use the same technique and it does work and it it it, it doesn't corrupt it as it keeps kind of using it so um, items dot push I'm gonna go do this dot HTML now, I'm just going to do a console at log of items so you can see what we've captured. Yeah, let's do length. Okay, so we've got 13 items. And if I just show you the first one. Right, the problem with this is it's caught the... We've cached the inner HTML of the LI. We actually need the LI element as well. So I'm just going to wrap this with li. Okay, and that's what we need to insert. So now that we've got our our cache, we also need to update the total. So items dot length. Right. So that's the the setup complete down to four items and we need to start kind of looping round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function to do this this loop. Um, function spy. Okay, so the, this is a private function inside of uh, this particular loop. The reason I'm calling it a function is because I'm going to. Uh, the reason I'm creating a function is because I need to call it in a set timeout so that it's a four second delay. So I need a named function to go back to. Um, I could pass in an anonymous function, but 
um, I might want to look at reusing this function and um, using like mouse overs to stop the timeout and to restart it again. So by having an actual function, I can I can name something to stop and start. Right. So within the effect, the jobs I need to achieve are insert a new item with opacity and height of zero. Fade the last item out. Increase the height of the, fir the new first item. And then fade the Oh, sorry. And at the same time, decrease the height of the last item. And finally, fade the first item in. And we can hide. Uh, sorry, hide. We can remove the last item at the same time. So, insert new item. Just going to capture called dollar insert, and I'm going to do ins uh, items current. So, if I show you items current, current is equal to zero. No, it's not. Sorry, it's equal to uh, five. So I'm just going to show you it here. Items, current item. Uh, since there's no real kind of indicator of what it is, but that, I mean that that's the fifth one down basically. <clears throat> so by wrapping the HTML in a dollar, we've created a new jQuery instance of the of the uh, the HTML. And at the same time, I've got to set the height to zero and the opacity to zero. And for good measure, I'm going to do display none as well. And then we have to prepend it to list. If I call this function at the end of our, so I'm just calling the spy function. At the end of the loop, um, at the end of our, our our plugin, you should see that it does nothing. What does it do? Let's just do a console.log to make sure we're in here. Okay. Yep, so we're in there. <coughs> Let's make sure that the current item and items current item has a value and it does so we should be seeing a new item at the top no we shouldn't be seeing it yet because it's hidden sorry right yes it has inserted it's here it's hidden because we told it to be hidden. So height of zero, opacity of zero, display none, hidden as uh, as I specifically asked it to be here. Right, good. Okay. So let's uh, find the last item. Dot find li last, and let's animate its opacity. I'm doing everything to one second as well. So let's check that that worked. Yep. And when that animation is complete, we're going to call a callback. So if you have a look at So the 
animate function takes these params, duration, and the callback. This is the one we're, we're calling. This one we're using. So animate. These are the uh, the properties we're animating. This is the time we're animating it for. And this is the callback function that we're going to run, which will have this lot. So now we're going to do dollar insert, and this is why we cached it because I need to change the uh, the height. And remember, this is ninety. Okay, I'm gonna put ninety, but we're gonna use this again later. Uh, sorry, I'm I actually want to cache this earlier on, so I'll show you where I'd grab that in a, in a moment. Uh, let's give that a try. Cool. And what do we want to do? And let's animate the opacity as well. Hmm, that didn't work. Let's let's chain that. To see if that works better. Okay, so, like I said, I want everything running at one second, so I'm just putting this one second here. So by chaining it, what I've set, what I've told jQuery to do is run this animation for one second, and once it's complete, run this animation for one second. So it will slide down and then fade it in. Okay. Now, the way that the quick snapper works is that it's reducing the height of this. Um, this element, so I'm going to do that at the same time. <coughs> um, this dot animate height not cool. So that's basically the effect. So now we just have to loop that. Well, hang on. So we've decreased. Increase the height of the um, of the last one at the same time, and finally we remove remove the last item. Now I'm going to do that as a callback because if I try and remove it before the animation is complete, you, you'll see what will happen. Okay, so let me show you that again. Here it snaps up by putting it. At this point, when the animation is completed, it's removed it because uh, at the point in which the two the, the the two LIs are exactly the same height. Now, the only thing left to do is to loop, and before we loop, increment the uh, the counter. So. We're going to do current item uh, increment by one, and we'll say if current item is greater than or equal to total, then current item is equal to naught. So, because this is an index starting from zero, um, and total is thirteen, items to total doesn't exist. So we need to say if it's. I mean, this could be if it's greater than total. No, sorry. If it's equal to total, then set the item to zero. But um, in case current item ever gets above total, this also satisfies the uh, the clause, and it sets the current items back down to zero. And we're going to do set timeout spy and interval. So the interval is this default we set up here. Four seconds, and we say in four seconds trigger the uh, the animation again, and let's give it a test. Cool, and that will loop round forever now. 
I'm just going to show you a couple of things that. So the first one was we've got this height hard coded, which works fine for this solution, but it doesn't mean we can. It means we can't reuse it somewhere else where the height's different. So I'm going to capture the height. Sorry, list dot find li first. And that's that. So all I've said is, before we go and remove the items down here, <coughs> in the list, find the first li and just grab its height, and that will give us 90 or you know whatever it is for this particular basic spy. Now, the other thing I want to show you is this isn't moving or it doesn't look like it's moving but it is actually in I think in IE or um, any browser that doesn't run fast enough this will jump a little bit because we're animating two different uh, the heights of two different elements at the same time and what we could do is um, in our HTML and I'll show you a firebug in our HTML we could wrap this UL with a div that has a height that is 90 times the number of LIs and if we if we use that because this um, this round a corner block is, is styled on the the sidebar div by putting um, a fixed height div inside of it it will keep it keep it at the height we want it so I'm just going to show you how to do that so before we go and remove some items we're going to List dot wrap. We do div. I'm just giving it a class in case I need to style it later. Okay, and let's just refresh, and you can see. And I have a div here. And what I'm going to do is just chain dot parent. CSS height equals height times limit. Let me just test if that works and I'll explain what's happening. <coughs> Excuse me. So I've got this div of uh, 360. What I've done here is if I take I've taken the UL that I've cached at this point, I've wrapped it with the div, which you saw. And because the context of my selector is still this UL, I've called this parent function, which changes my selection to this current div. So if I show you um, in just a bit of jQuery on the on here. Um. Right, I'm just going to comment this out so I can show you. Right, so spy dot wrap. What's a good way of doing this? So if I run if I run this query, it'll return um, an object, and that object is the spy. Now, if I run it again and call dot parent, you can see it's the spy wrapper. Okay, so I've gone from here to this point. Okay, and by doing that, I can then chain. I can I can chain and say the the CSS height is height, which we've got here, which is ninety multiplied by the limit. Now, if you've got um, ULs with 
um, padding and margin, you need to check that height is including that pageant padding and margin. If not, you need to add that on uh, uh, to include into this this height value. But I'm you need to test it. Yeah, yeah, you need to test it. So now that we've got this fixed height thing, we don't actually need to animate the uh, the height down to zero. So I can comment this out. So we just do this dot remove, and let's have a look. Cool. So the effect is exactly the same, but it means that I'm doing one less animation, which is is you know less expensive on the uh, on the browser. So that's it. I'll uh, I'll put it up with the I'll put it up with the commented out. Yeah, the the commented out animates so that you can have a look yourself. And that's it. If you've got any comments or feedback or suggestions or requests, go and have a look at jQueryForDesigners.com. And um, in hopefully next week, if I've got time, or the following week, I'll be uh, doing some of the API um, screencasts. All right, thanks for watching.